minds with that and that alone in mind to bless your name tonight in worship with the story of Christmas. Thank you for your love. Thank you for these amazing family members, Lord. Thank you for that very excited choir downstairs. And we ask your blessing to just be on our evening together in Jesus' name. Amen.
court right about. Okay, girls, I'm here now. So what gift have you decided our class is going to get Mr. Lancaster? What? What have we decided? Yeah, this is supposed to be a group decision. The officers of the class were given the task of buying something nice for our teacher together. Right, but shopping is kind of a girl's thing, don't you think? Oh, please, that is so not PC. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. gender profiling. What? Charge it, charge it, charge it, fly! Okay, we've got to find a present for our homeroom teacher, Mr. Lancaster. As president of our class, I make a motion that the vice president and treasurer take the collected money and go buy his gift. All in favor? No way, man. No, Brody. The class entrusted us with all this money, and they asked us to make the decision. But I've got stuff I need to do. Exactly what stuff do you have to do? Well, I've got to be back down by the department store in one hour. My sister's in the Christmas pageant, and I want to see the new system on display at the Game Depot. I'm so getting that for Christmas. I thought I'd go up and work on my skills. I don't think so, Brody. Majority rules. You're helping us shop for Mr. Lancaster. You just don't have any Christmas spirit, Brody. What do you mean? I've got the spirit. No, you don't. See, the Christmas spirit is when you stop thinking about yourself and start thinking about others. Oh, really? So what do you call this? This what? Take a look around. Listen, these people don't look or sound like they have the Christmas spirit either. Well, when Officer Paul, the mall cop, hears this, he'll make them stop.
Nothing to see here. Merry Christmas, shoppers. I know it's nice to say that it's better to give than receive, but you know, you've got a long Christmas list too. What? What are you trying to say? Nothing. It's just that we want to get this gift finding thing over with so we can get to the stuff we want to do. Let's stop being picky and pick something. Perfect. Here's our gift from Mr. Lancaster. That was easy. Let's wrap it up. A lighted makeup mirror? The package says it's a 100 watt professional makeup mirror. I don't believe you. I'll bet he doesn't already have one. Forget it, Brody. This was someone special and he deserves a special gift. Would you like a chicken nugget? Ooh, I love these. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Did I hear you were looking for a special gift for somebody special? Yeah, totally. We really need something special for our homeroom teacher. I know what we can give him. What? <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like chicken nuggets? You want us to give Mr. Lancaster chicken nuggets? Yes, chicken nuggets are perfect. Do you get from? Well, if you're searching for something really special, I know over a great, great shop, they have things that you won't find anywhere else. Really? Do they have video games? Brody! It's called Tiff's Gifts. Here's a card about the place. It's just right upstairs next to the department store. Tiff's Gifts, coming for the great Christmas giveaway. Cool, thank you. We appreciate your help. No problem. Tiff's Gifts, are you kidding me? Sounds like sissy things. I'd rather have chicken nuggets or a lighted makeup mirror. Well, let's at least check it out. Here we go. Hope you guys find something. Remember. been in this store before. I'm thinking the same thing. Whatever. Look, we're in a hurry. We need to find something for our homeroom teacher. Oh, and what is your teacher like? I don't know. He's kind of old. Old? Yeah, like 30 or something. 30? Well, hmm. I see your problem. Can you tell me anything else about him? Well, well, he wears cowboy boots. And I think he has a bowling trophy on his desk. And he reads a lot. Really? He sounds interesting. Tell me more about the reading part. What does he read? Most of the time it's the Bible. OK, that helps a lot. I bet your teacher knows about the greatest gift ever given then. The greatest gift? Mr. Lancaster has talked about that before. Mr. Lancaster? Really? Father gave the Son, the Son gave the Spirit, the Spirit gives us life, so we can give the gift of love, and the gift goes on, and the gift goes 
for him this year. Yes, I think so. Wonder what perfect present they bought. Yeah, me too. I'll ask. Okay, Tiff, we'll take whatever thing you sold them. Well, it's not that kind of gift. Well, what? Not all presents are things. Some can't be bought or sold. What do you mean? Well, Tiff told us that things can rust or break. She have to find something that lasts our dad a lifetime. Oh! 
Okay, I give up. What's in that special box? Well, all year we've been coming by Tiff's store, and she's been helping us write thank you notes. They're notes to our dad. He's been in and out of work. We just wanted to tell him how much we love him. Yes, and Dylan and Stella, you sure have. And now we've wrapped up all those wonderful notes in this beautiful box. It's all ready to go under the tree. Oh, I see. Hmm. Well, hope your dad loves the present. No, I know he'll love the present. Merry Christmas, you two. Thank you, Tiff. Merry Christmas. Bye, guys. Hope you find the perfect present. Thank you. So we'll give him a note and tell him we love him. But what do we buy him? I vote we go back and get that lighted makeup mirror. No, Brody. Tiff, what's a good gift for a good teacher? Well, I can tell you about a good gift some people gave to a good king. Maybe that'll give you some ideas. Okay, but can we keep it rolling? I, get to, I got to get to my sister's Christmas pageant. I'll try. Long ago, some wise men brought three gifts to the king that were so unique that it still puzzles people today. You want us to give Mr. Lancaster a puzzle? Well, no, not a puzzle. Maybe these three gifts can give you an idea on what to give your Mr. Lancaster. That's right. or what? I don't think Mr. Lancaster likes cufflinks. Well, uh, what I mean is, do men still wear cufflinks anymore? My grandpa does, and he's old. But with cowboy boots? I see your point. Then how about instead of cufflinks, we get from a heart of gold, like the song says? 
A heart of gold? Is that like giving from your heart? I think it means you give your very best. I think you're both right. And if Mr. Lancaster were here, well, I wonder if he'd say to look into the Bible for gifts that were given with a pure heart. This place. I did, but I never really wanted to come in. Tiff, why did you open this store? It's kind of different. Well, I'm glad you asked. It happened like this.
That is so cool. Yeah, it is. I want to make sure I celebrate Christ's birthday at Christmas. It's all about him. So, I was wondering, Tiff, what's your profit margin? What? Well, do you make any money here? Brody, that's not appropriate. He really does have issues. No, before you start dissing me, let me explain. I'm just trying to find out if, just, if this whole idea of Tiff's gifts is about helping us find presents, or is this her gift to us? I don't understand. I think I've just figured out what Tiff is trying to show us. All along, she's been showing us to give like our Christ gave to us. First, God loved us so much, he gave us a perfect present, his love. He also gave us his best, his one and only son. Oh, look, everyone. It's time for the Christmas pageant. Brody, look. There's your little sister. She's Mary holding the baby Jesus. Yeah, I see her. She's holding the greatest gift of all, Jesus. Brody, I think you've got it, and I think your teacher would be very pleased with your insights.
Well, are you blessed so far? Amen. Let's give these young people and their instructors another round of applause. We're not, we're not concluded yet, but we're coming close. But it is highly appropriate that of all the holidays, the one most associated with children is that of Christmas. That's why as we begin this Christmas season, this is just December 1st, and nothing can get you quote-unquote in the Christmas spirit like observing children and as they begin to celebrate the goodness of God. And that's appropriate not just psychologically or sociologically, but it's appropriate spiritually as well. For Jesus said that unless you become as a child, you cannot receive the kingdom of heaven. And so of all the holidays, the one that is most associated with children is also the one that is most associated with gifts. We have gifts under a tree. They've talked about gifts in the performance tonight. The perfect gift being I love you. The precious gift being what does a person need the most and being able to share that with them. Well, Jesus described that this way. He said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And so as we celebrate this gift, as we celebrate this joy, as these children commemorate something that we've all observed for most of our lives, at least most of us in this room, the fact of the matter is we're reminded that the greatest gift of all is not just Jesus Christ in the sense of, of, of a formulaic remembrance, but that Jesus Christ really did come for you. Jesus Christ really did go to a cross. Jesus Christ really did die on that cross. Jesus Christ really did rise from the dead. And our faith is based upon the fact that Jesus is, in fact, alive right now. Not just in a figment of somebody's imagination, not just in a storybook. Jesus Christ lives. Hallelujah. And he's coming again. And so because he's coming again, and because he is alive, and because he came for us once, and because he lived a sinless life, and because he died what the, the theologians would say, a vicarious and atoning death, what that means is he took your place and he took my place. All my sins God laid on Jesus, and Jesus took those sins and laid them on the cross, killing those sins. And when he rose from the dead, he conquered those sins. And in conquering those sins, he conquered death. And he conquered hell. And he conquered the grave for you and for me. Hallelujah. No wonder, no wonder the Apostle Paul would say the words that these young people quoted earlier in song. That God exalted Christ to the highest place. And gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, my friends, there's going to come a day when you have no choice about bowing. There's going to come a day where you have no choice about acknowledging the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That day's coming. But today, today, it's a gift offered. Today, just like any gift, you can accept it or you can reject it. If I walk up to you and, and hold out a $100 bill, which I don't have, by the way, but if I did, you have a choice immediately. You can receive that gift or you can say, no, I don't, I don't need it. I don't want it. I don't care for it. That's up to you. We well, see today the gift has been given. God so loved the world, he gave. But it's up to you whether or not you'll receive that gift. Listen to me carefully. It doesn't diminish him one iota. He is king of all kings. He is Lord of all lords. He is savior and redeemer and the high and holy one. Whether you accept him or not doesn't change who he is. But by accepting who he is, it changes who we are. 
it changes who you are. Before the Lord, I'm just a guy, a sinner in need of a Savior, lost and on my way to eternal, eternal darkness without Christ. But since I met him, I'm a son and a child of the Most High God. I am a Christian. I have been born again, blood-bought, spirit-filled, and none of it is anything I've ever done for myself. All I said was, yes, Lord, I need you. I love you. I want you. I'll receive you. And he changed my life. So Christmas is not about the children as much as it is about being childlike. And so you and I have a choice tonight. Most of you in this house have received that gift, but some of you have not. Many of you know about the gift, but you've placed it on a shelf saying, you know, well, when I get closer to the end, then I'll deal with the gift. No, 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 friend, that's not how it works. Today's the day of salvation. Tonight's the night of salvation. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. You need to make sure that your heart is right with the gift of God tonight. So not out of embarrassment, but simply out of respect for you. If everyone would please bow your heads for a moment. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. But before we do, I offer you the invitation to receive that gift. Not the gift of church membership. Not the gift of of a pastor's words. But the gift of Jesus Christ. He said that if two or three of us are gathered together in his name, then he's here. Then that means he's here right now. And before you'll raise a hand, he knows your heart. And he knows whether or not you're in a place where you need him. And he knows whether or not you're in a place where you'll receive him. Now, I know that life can be hard, and I know that trials and tribulations come to all. But I also know that this world and this life isn't the end of the story. Eternity is an appointment that all of us have. And the only way for you to safely arrive there is for the gift that came here to be in your heart. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you would say, Pastor, please pray for me tonight. I need the gift. I need Jesus Christ to be my Lord and to be my Savior. Like a child, I humble myself, acknowledging that without Christ, without God, I'm without hope. But with him, I have all hope. Without Christ, without God, I'm without righteousness. But with him, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Without Christ, without God, I have no eternal life. But with him, I have eternity awaiting me in him, my Lord and my Savior. So if you're willing to surrender your life to the life of Jesus Christ tonight, while others have their heads bowed out of respect and and privacy for you, Would you please raise your hand and I'll pray with you. If you'll say, Pastor, please pray with me. I'm not going to call you down. I'm not going to call you forward. I'm not even going to make you stand up. But I'm going to pray with you right where you are. If you'll say, Pastor, please pray with me tonight. I want to receive the great gift of Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Just hold your hand up and I'll pray with you in Jesus' name. God bless you, friend. God bless you, sister. God bless you, sister. God bless you, young lady. God bless you, sir. Anyone else? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you in the name of the Lord. God bless you. You're tired of going your way. You need to go God's way. God bless you. God bless you in the name of Jesus. God bless you, sister, in the name of the Lord. God bless you, young men, young ladies. God bless you, children. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Anyone else? God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, young man. God bless you. Hallelujah. Know that the Lord sees you and he knows your heart. Hallelujah. God bless you. Anyone else in Jesus' name? And you say, Pastor, why are, why are you making us raise your hand? Well, one of the things is you need to make that commitment and the Lord knows your heart. But the other thing is Jesus also said that where two of us agree in prayer as to touching something, it'll be done by our Father. And so this is me agreeing with you. You've acknowledged that this is your need, and I'm going to pray with you, and you're going to pray with me, and we're going to pray with one another. And the beautiful thing is that the Word of God tells us that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You that raised your hands tonight, the Lord is not going to reject you. He's not going to reject you. He's not going to reject you. Hallelujah. As you accept him, understand he's accepted you. 
Now, before we pray, is there one, one more call? Is there anyone else? Anyone else in the name of Jesus? God bless you. God bless you for the courage to do that. God bless you. I see you back there. God bless you. Anyone else? God bless you, young man. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? God bless you, little one. God bless you, buddy. In the name of the Lord. Now, church, we're going to pray together, okay? Is that all right? And I'm going to lead these precious ones in a prayer. And I'm asking you, as if you were kneeling down by them in an old-fashioned altar, would you pray this prayer with me? And we're going, to, we're going to go before the Lord. And I know that the Lord's going to hear us tonight. So everyone in this house, would you join me in prayer? And you that raised your hands, please make this prayer your prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you humbly as a child. I ask you to please forgive me of all my sins. Please take away my selfishness and my pride. I ask right now that Jesus Christ will come into my heart and be my Lord and be my Savior. I freely choose to receive the gift of heaven's love and heaven's grace in the person of Jesus Christ. My Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer, my King, and my friend, I give you all my days and surrender everything to you. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for rising from the dead. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for accepting me as your child. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good. The Lord bless you. And uh, we're almost finished. And you get to give a gift in a few minutes. So the Lord bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. God bless you. Once we have received this free gift, we want to give away this gift and share with others. Not only do we share the message of Jesus' love and his free gift of salvation, but we also want to share in giving gifts to others. These gifts can be things that do not cost us anything. A smile and I love you, an offer of help to a neighbor are all examples. Jesus said, they will know you are my disciples if you love one another. During this next song, you will be invited to bring your gifts to the bin. These gifts will be given to children who may not otherwise, otherwise have a Christmas. Let's celebrate God's love for us in giving to one another. Remember, it's better to give than receive.
Hi, honey. I delivered those packages after school, and I've, I got off early, so... Oh. Mr. Lancaster, what are you doing here? Hey, hide the money. What's going on here? Well, guys, I figured out you were talking about my husband. Yes, my husband. When you said cowboy boots, a bowling trophy, and an old man who liked to read his Bible. Hey, who said I was old? So, Mr. Lancaster, you're married to Tiff? That's right, five years last June. So what are my class officers doing in Tiff's gifts? Looking for a present for someone special? No. Well, let's just be honest, guys. Mr. Lancaster, we came in here to find a gift for you. Oh, I don't really need anything. But we've got all this money, donations from the class. Wow, that's nice. What do we do with it? Well, let me tell you what your teacher may like most. May I? Of course. See that tree right by the door? Mm -hmm. Tiff and I call that the great Christmas giveaway. You can see it is covered with gift tags. Each tag has a name and a special need on it. There are children listed who need toys. Oh look, here's a single mom who needs babysitting once a week. Ooh, I'll take that. Here's a wonderful retired man who just needs help shoveling snow. I can help with that. Tiff, give it to me. Hey, I like this. The great Christmas giveaway. And guess what? As you give, you get something in return. Really? What? You get the joy of giving. Yes, the joy of giving. Hey, I wonder if any of those kids want a new game system. Well, I'm sure that would be a wonderful. Rody, you mean? I've already got games I haven't played yet. I would, I would wonder if any of those kids would really like it. Brody, that's great. Ah, uh, it's nothing. Class presidents need to set an example, right? Come on, guys. Let's go to the tree and get some more gift tags. If that's okay with you, Mr. Lancaster. It will be a joy. Tiff, now I have no I've seen you before. Mr. Lancaster has a picture of you on his desk. Well, oh, oh yeah, that's where I've seen you. Well, she's much prettier in person. Hey, I'm starved. Let's go get some chicken nuggets. I love those things. I told you. Don't say a word.
know, it's embarrassing when the pastor misses his cue. <laughs> Don't you appreciate what these young people did tonight? And Dr. Anderson leading the team. Amen. Thank you. We have uh, refreshments and things for you down. We have refreshments, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> we have refreshments for you downstairs in Faith Hall. Would you stand with me and let's, uh, let's ask the Lord's blessing upon the rest of our evening and, uh, and pronounce his benediction. Father, we're grateful. We're so grateful for Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We're so grateful for the gospel. We're so grateful that we can celebrate tonight. Lord, we're grateful for the commitments made. We're grateful for the, the lives that were touched. We're grateful, Father, for these children and young people and the efforts they've made. Father, we're grateful for Dr. Anderson and the staff and the faculty and the accompaniment and everything. Lord, you have been a blessing to us, and we thank you, Father, for all that you have done. Now, Lord, would you please go with grace upon each life as they leave this place, and may they just have a wonderful celebration this entire month of your goodness and the gift that Jesus Christ is. Now, may the Lord your God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his glory upon you, and may this season be a season of great peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, and all God's people who greet said together, Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Merry, Merry Christmas. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs>